and welcome to World Inside with Tian Wei, coming to you live from Beijing on CGTN. Coming up on today's program, Singapore Prime Minister Li Xianlong is on a three-day state visit to China. Can the two countries get strained ties back on track? China's mounting garbage problem has been partly blamed on its appetite for takeout. How can China incentivize its citizens to reduce their garbage footprint? Singaporean Prime Minister Li Xianlong is in Beijing for a three-day state visit. He met with Chinese President Xi Jinping on Wednesday and his counterpart Li Keqiang on Tuesday. The two countries agreed to raise bilateral ties to a new high and put recent difficulties behind them. Li Xianlong's fourth time in China. Chinese President Xi Jinping held talks with visiting Singaporean Prime Minister Li Xianlong in Beijing on Wednesday. During the meeting, Li expressed concern over the ongoing tension in the Korean Peninsula. He also congratulated Xi on the success of the recent BRICS summit. On Tuesday, Premier Li Keqiang welcomed Li at the Great Hall of the People and spoke highly of bilateral relations. China and Singapore are good neighbors. China attaches great importance to China-Singapore ties. Singapore is a coordinator of China ASEAN ties and the rotating chair of ASEAN next year. Li Xianlong and Singapore will spare no efforts to facilitate the relationship between China and ASEAN and enhance cooperation among the member states. Li Xianlong praised the China proposed Belt and Road Initiative. He said it can help further integrate China into regional and international economic systems while boosting growth in other countries. The two prime ministers decided to maintain the good momentum of the high-level exchanges between the two countries and further cooperation at all levels on the Belt and Road Initiative. Singapore's cooperation with China concerning the Belt and Road Initiative is focused on infrastructure interconnectivity, financial projects, and third-party programs such as personnel training, which Singapore believes can benefit both sides. Trade and investments topped Li Xianlong's agenda during his visit to China. Singapore stands as China's largest service trade partner among Belt and Road countries. It is widely believed that Li's visit to China will bring bilateral cooperation to a new high. So will these meetings in Beijing help China and Singapore ties get back on track from the earlier difficulties? We loop in our panel to find out in Beijing. We have two of them, Rong Ying, who is a vice president and senior research fellow from the China Institute of International Studies. Mr. Rong, welcome back to our program. Thank you. Four years away. <laughs> Thank you. It's a great pleasure. Great pleasure to have you. Also in Beijing, we have Mr. Liu Bao, Cheng Dean of the Center for International Business Ethics from the University of International Business and Economics here in China. Welcome, Professor Liu. Yes. We will also like to welcome our guest from Singapore. We have Kit Yap Tan, co director of the Asia Competitiveness Institute, associate professor at the Lee Kuan Yew School of Public Policy with National University of Singapore. Welcome, Dr. Tan. I want to begin with you, in fact, Dr. Tan. Earlier difficulties, Hello. there were some strange yes. relationship yes. between China and Singapore about South China yes. Sea, about some of the political agendas as well. So, will this visit really change the picture? But I think the uh, relation between Singapore and China is always on track, whether it's on trade or politics, except that sometimes we have bump, bumpy rides. Uh, over the last one and a half years, it was more bumpy than usual. But I think we should look at the big picture. The big picture is Singapore and China have common interest in pushing for globalization, in taking the leadership in pushing for the One Belt, One Road initiative. So I think uh, uh, we have a lot to do, and Singapore can play a critical role in terms of infrastructure development, mm. investment, and funding. You know, this infrastructure development, and we have the experience, and, and in terms of the investment, 85% of the investment into the One Belt, One Road country uh, went through Singapore. Okay. And one-third of Chinese outward investment went to Singapore as well. So I think we can do more and to push for this globalization. Interesting. Dr. Tan is talking about business. Is it all about business, uh, Mr. Rong, here in Beijing? The ties between China and Singapore. 
Yeah, of course, business is important, but I think it's, there's something more. Uh, pl uh, firstly, I believe that the political trust is, is very much important. As a matter of fact, if you look at the relationship, the trajectory of relationship between China and Singapore, uh, and interestingly, a big country, I mean, and a small country in geopolitical, uh, uh, geo geographical terms, mm. you would find that it's a very special relationship. I, I think as the Prime Minister Li Xianlong himself made it, that is, in every uh, step of China's development in the mm. past 40 years, uh, Singapore has been closely working with China and play a very important role. So that is as one of the factors that I think have political significance. Secondly, I think because the leadership and the generation of the leadership between uh -huh. China you know, and uh, Singapore, and they have developed such a close relation. That also consolidate the, uh, I think, the, uh, make it special and make the relationship very important for, for the two countries. Mm -hmm. Mr. Rong, you've been emphasizing on the history part, whether it's a history of co-development together, each one have their own role, or the history of the earlier generation of leaders interacting with one another, which is also what the Chinese President Xi Jinping was talking about when he was meeting with the Singaporean Prime Minister Li Xianlong on Wednesday, talking about the momentum renewed once again, hopefully with this trip. But you know what? Singapore, some say, has always been having the history of keeping China at arm's length so that neighboring countries will not fear the so-called ethnic Chinese uh, majority city-state. This is evident in Singapore being the last ASEAN country to recognize China. Singapore's military relationship with the U.S. also intensified in late 2015 and even uh, continues today when the U.S. deployed the long-range P-8 civilian planes in Singapore. These can track also Chinese submarines. The most recent spat occurred last November when nine Singaporean armored troops carriers were impounded in Hong Kong for two months. And this is only a very brief list. Uh, so, Professor Liu, the question is, with all this long list of facts happened over the past few years, will a state visit really be able to mend the fences and put the two countries back on its original good feelings toward one another? Well, the historical record has not been uh, very smooth uh, because of the anti-communist sentiment, uh, you know, uh, during the Lee Kuan Yew time. And also, the uh, uh, Singapore is really straddling between uh, a number of relations. Uh, first of all, between the two superpowers uh, across the Pacific, uh, China versus the United States. Mm. So he has to dance a very delicate balance. And uh, uh, there's also even uh, military exercises involving uh, the uh, uh, Taiwan province, uh, which is China is not really feeling very comfortable. Mm. So, and also over the cases of the South China Sea, uh, arbitration uh, award and all this. So uh, the grudges cannot really be repaired immediately. And where uh, uh, the question is that, is the Singapore ready? to uh, fully uh, understand the picture when China's rising power and also when the United States is, re is uh, far more retreating than expected by them from uh, the Asian Pacific area. That is an interesting question, whether Singapore will realize that has a lot to do with what Singapore wants and the kind of role it wants to play in the region. Dr. Tan, help us to understand what exactly Singapore wants. Singapore used to be the middleman between China and the United States. Of course, time has changed. China has changed its position and roles in the world. So will Singapore still be like that? Secondly, you got second generation of leader, uh, Prime Minister Li Xianlong, not like his father at all when it comes to impact of the, on the country. Will he be able to bring together the nation when there is a policy coming from his administration toward China? Well, I think there are quite a bit of misunderstanding about uh, uh, Singapore have to keep a, a delicate balance among the major powers. When we say keep the balance, it doesn't mean balance at every moment in time. It is balanced over a period of time. So you can see sometimes we have certain views and we have certain actions. Uh, it may seem to be closer to the United States or China from one time to another. But over a period of time, you will see a very balanced uh, a relationship among major powers that Singapore have to trade very delicately. 
But I think as uh, sovereign states, uh, sometimes we have to make our point. When our point is noted, then I think we have to focus on the big picture. And certainly with the uh, common interest in trade and economic development, it naturally will bring closer uh, political ties. And I think it is important that, uh, uh, that both China and Singapore have to recognize we are, although a Chinese majority, but we are Singaporean and we are slightly different from, from many perspectives. Mm. But I think we certainly recognize the rise in China and especially in the economic uh, uh, sphere. Uh, China is leading the world, in fact, in globalization. And Singapore may be a small country, but when it comes to trade, we are not small. And when it comes to many of the uh, uh, economic uh, uh, circumstances like competitiveness, uh, when it comes to uh, right. foreign exchange reserve per capita, we're not small as well. Mm. So I think in that sense, Singapore can play a leadership role, especially next year, with a chairman of ASEAN, mm. and we can help to bring a closer tie between China and ASEAN by promoting trade, for example, the Regional Cooperation or Economic right. Partnership, or RCEP, and I think to bring together more harmony among ASEAN members with China, this is something good. And well, if harmony can be preserved, I think political ties will improve. Oh, I understand well, but uh, Dr. Tan, we are not questioning the capabilities when it comes to Singapore as a nation or as an economic uh, power, but rather whether it has the quality of trustworthiness when it comes to this relationship with China, whether it is about the internal capability to bring the country together, as we have known, there were certain cases going on in Singapore talking about the uh, first the family, and also the capability of winning the trust from China. Um, winning the trust, I would like to go to you, Mr. Rong, here in Beijing. Is Singapore, with all of this, a trustworthy partner? Well, at least the uh, past uh, few years of uh, situation, particularly I think the setbacks, uh, the relationship has suffered, raised the question about this. That is, uh, whether uh, Singapore uh, would or could play such a role in, 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 in the context where the uh, geopolitical, I mean, the balance of mm. power is changing. And I think there are so many changes, of course, as you rightly said. The Singapore as itself is also going, going changes. So lit uh, naturally, the question raised that uh, whether Singapore will continue to play a role that uh, it would, uh, I think, for What is your Chinese, judgment? Yeah, for the Chinese perspective, that it would uh, perceive that it still uh, help or welcome uh, China rise and, and the rise of China would serve the best yeah. interest of the region mm. and to the bilateral region, of course in the, in the end it has served the interest of the so it's no wonder that every country has a role may, to play may. and everyone has a way of winning the trust winning its worthiness in the international stage but the question is uh, with only a few years time will the earlier grudges be able to be forgotten and the trust can be easily won even well, though Singapore is going to play a role as the rotating presidency of the ASEAN countries. Mr. Rong. Oh yes, of course. I think a big test uh, uh, has sort of uh, certainly ahead. We are, we are expecting, at least with this visit, uh, I'm uh, personally confident that at least the two leadership mm. I mean, have realized that uh, this relationship is important and as both sides we attach great importance to that and the, the two leadership uh, agreed that to explore and broaden uh, and the uh, relationship to uh, to um, uh, uh, to an air to some new areas mm. so, uh, so so that the way for more substantial and fruitful results so I thought that uh, this is a good beginning, and this is also, I think, uh, show the readiness and the political will of the mm -hmm. two sides to ensure this relationship will continue to benefit the two sides. Mm. But of course, as I said, uh, that uh, the situation is still changing, and the questions are still, I think, uh, yet to be answered. Uh, but let's uh, let's uh, hope. I think in the end, I think uh, a good, stable. A relationship between the two countries will serve the best interest of the of the two sides. Dr. Tang, your response. Yeah, yeah. If I may answer to the question whether Singapore is a trusted partner, may I put it this way? I think if you want to look forward, it's better not to be suspicious, not to be speculative. And I think if we use the old Chinese wisdom, 
is the best judge is to ting qi yan guan qi xing. This applies to all countries in the world. It's better to look at what they say and watch what they do. Mm. Now, I think we should look, be forward looking, rather than expecting whether Singapore is a relying partner or not. Mm. I think the old wisdom tells us, look at what we say and look at what we do. I think this applies to all countries. <laughs> now, if we <laughs> have this kind we of What kind of time frame you are attitude, talking about? Since earlier, you, er, earlier, Dr. Tang, you were arguing, let's put it in different time frames. Sometime you know you do this and sometime you, you look at a bigger time frame. So what kind of time frame you're referring to when you're saying King Qi and Guan Qi Xing, listening to the words and looking at the actions. We have to put a time frame over there, right? I mean, well, yeah, if I may say the time frame is always, always have to look at what they say and what they do, whether they're consistent or not. There's no a specific a time frame, but it's okay. always you have to be consistent. And, and as I said, you know, in a ride, it can be bumpy, it can be smooth ride all the time. But if over a long period of time, if the relationship continue to go forward, I think this is the right thing to do. So when things are getting better and you start to put it in such a way, are we, can we be trusted? I mean, this kind of attitude, of course, it doesn't help to promote the better relationship between the people of two countries. Well, and nobody wants to have an attitude, and yet some of the previous help. facts did suggest uh, some evidence for people to have certain attitude. But let me come back to you, Professor Liu. Here is an important well, question. 13% of Singaporean trade actually is coming from China, the bilateral relationship, bilateral trade. Meanwhile, Belt and Road Initiative, huge price tag infrastructure, global trade. Singapore, of course, wants to have a role here, whether it's for joint development, investment, or for investment coming from China. So how will this proceed uh, from here? Is Singapore, from China's perspective, from Asia's perspective, as significant as it used to be? If you look at Indonesia, if you look at Malaysia, if you look at some of the other Southeast Asian countries, Vietnam even included, growing very fast. So will Singapore, in money sense, Professor Liu, because yeah, you're doing money-wise mm -hmm. businesses, what exactly is Singapore's role now? Well, Singapore will continue to serve as the uh, strong uh, financial hub and also the, as the strong the, uh, shipping hub. Uh, uh, particularly along the Morocco roads, although China has more uh, choices and more options at, uh, at the moment. And uh, Singapore can really participate greatly because uh, uh, China is in a uh, big urbanization process and uh, the, uh, it seems that uh, the Suzhou Industrial Park has been very successful and the Eco City in Tianjin with the help of uh, Singapore is also uh, very uh, outstanding. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, in the meantime, the, uh, they can really benefit, uh, number one, from the big project uh, under proposal uh, you know, to, to link Singapore to Kuala Lumpur. That's a big, uh, big project that China can do it. And the other is the AIB because uh, Singapore is still uh, a, the founding member of AIB. Right. So therefore, uh, uh, they can really play a very important role in offering expertise and offering the, as a springboard to many countries. Mm -hmm. And of course, you know, they serve now as the, uh, as the chairman for the China ASEAN, uh, you know, the, uh, uh, the meeting. ASEAN. Yeah, rotating the ASEAN chairman, uh, ro yeah. rotating chairman. So Ch China really consider ASEAN as the core part of the Belt and Road mm -hmm. strategy. So uh, if we really we can play a more trustworthy game, mm -hmm. so definitely there's going to be a proactive and conducive role that uh, Singapore can really do. Mm. Uh, we understand, uh, Dr. Tan, uh, Singaporean well. Prime Minister Li is going to visit the United States in October before President Trump's planned visit to China. So obviously, Singapore could also still play what it used to play as a middleman between China and the United States. Pardon me if I'm using this simplified phrase, but probably that's the best way to describe it within a few seconds. So what exactly is Singapore having in well, mind I as to the role it's likely to play, it could play between China and the United States? And even as a rotating chairman of the ASEAN countries for next year, what specific pragmatic role can really Singapore play in that regard? Dr. Tan, briefly. 
Well, I have, yeah, I have two points to make. The first point is n Singapore never pretend to be the middleman between China and the United States. We are too small to play that role. We never assume that role. But I think you can expect if we visit the United States, we will ask the United States, please do not retreat from globalization. Please do not go into protectionism. That you can expect us to say. But my second point about as a championship of ASEAN. Now, there seems to be a lot of talk about the role of Singapore and ASEAN in the 21st century maritime ship road. But I think that's only half of the story. Mm. And Asia competitiveness, we are the official economic think tank of the government. I think Singapore can bring ASEAN and also many countries in the region to talk about the Asia economic silk belt in Central Asia how we can engineer developments of infrastructure, how we can bring the sovereign, a sovereign wealth fund all over the world to invest in this infrastructure yeah. and to have the financing, including the internationalization of RMB in bonds to be done in Singapore. So we can not just pushing the one road, but we are now working towards one belt. And next week, or in a few days time, I will, I will be visiting Xinjiang. And we want to okay. talk about how Xinjiang can play an important platform to, to go into Central Asia and Singapore is looking towards to the first mover advantage to have our role in Central Asia to help to develop the infrastructure of the belt as well. All so right. there is a lot we can do plus being the chairman of ASEAN and we can do more on trade. It's good for everybody. Economic integration is the key, I think, and it will lead right. to connectivity we and all agree about that. The leading of the majority of Asians. Yes, we all agree about that. Uh, before we go, Mr. Okay, Rong, thank we you. only have a minute to go. I'm glad. Uh, well, discussion do not have to be always agree with one another, but rather to have different parties to express opinions, as you can know, Dr. Tan. Uh, before we go, Mr. Rong, how yes. should we understand that China's capability of adjusting its relationship with whether Singapore or other countries? Earlier there were grudges, now there are talks about bringing it back on track. But then there are, there's time to be tested to see whether things can really go back and better. Dr. Rong, how China will adjust itself? I think uh, the, uh, as far as China is concerned, I, I, we are not asking much, um, big or small, for, for countries. I think that, uh, for me, I, I would believe the correct attitude towards the rise of China. Mm -hmm towards, I think, the legitimate interests of China. And that is what we've always said on the issues of uh, core interest and the major concerns of China. We are looking for a kind of mutual respect and mutual understanding. That applies to uh, big countries like the United States and others, and also applies to big uh, smaller countries, as like I said, in, geogra in geographical terms mm -hmm. like, like Singapore. And uh, the, I think uh, uh, the, at this, during the visit, I, I learned that the two leadership uh, uh, reiterated that, which is good. And I think the question of the relationship, uh, I mean, vis-a-vis uh, -vis China, it's really with China and the U.S., I, 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 we can understand that Singapore, uh, like other countries, would, uh, would, allow, would not like to take a side, mm. but they also would like a more balanced uh, sort of, uh, 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 sort of uh, picture where I think uh, countries like Singapore, they have bigger room to maneuver. That's right. And on the, on the initiative like Belt and Road in ARB, I think uh, Singapore, is, I think, has made the right decision because these initiatives, in the end, it brings benefits, common develop benefits, a mutual benefits to, to, to China certainly, to Singapore and to region uh, as a whole. Right. So I thought that this is, a, this is a kind of a choice. This is a okay. kind of a sort of indication that uh, China would like to see and, uh, and that will also help consolidate the relationship, make mm. it more strong and, uh, and more uh, steady. I see Professor Liu, final word from you. I think uh, China's leaders, they have a broad vision and uh, strategically they can accommodate and even absorb the differences and some grudges. So we are looking at the bigger picture. Mm. Uh, and so if we work together, uh, security and prosperity can be there at the doorstep. Mm. It used to be the case that we talk about Chinese origin. That has been the one that linking China and Singapore in the many decades earlier. But now it is the common interest and the capabilities both have to adjust for the future That's that we right. are talking about here. Thank you so much, uh, Liu Baocheng, Rong Ying, and also 
Lee Kiat Tan from Singapore. Really appreciate, gentlemen, the three of you for being with us. Thank you. Thank you.